Hello, my name is Susan Kraft and this is Talk Art. Today we're going to talk with Joy Mumford. She is an Osher Fellow at the Exploratorium and a media consultant. She is going to tell us how humans, you and me, interact with technology. She was trained in user interface design and has recently moved into the electronic arts domain. Joy, thank you so much for coming today to Talk thank Art. Thank you for having me. I would like to know if you can tell us, which I'm sure you can, about the interface design. Um, well, an interface is something that you use and sits between you and the task you're trying to accomplish. So in this case, it's a door knob, and most people would grab it and turn it to the left or turn it to the right. And that is an interface. Oh. Um, and the affordance technical word is something that tells you what to do with it. So in this particular case, you wouldn't turn this. You would push down and then open the door that way. So there's different affordances. Correct. These both have to be designed, and they have to be designed typically by an interface designer. Oh, OK. So nowadays, we think of something like this as an interface. Yes. And it is, but it does a lot more than just open the door. Yeah, although it does open a lot of doors. Yes, <laughs> in the world it does. Yeah. What else do you have there? Um, well, what I was going to try and talk about is some of the history that uh, we came from in interface design. And um, that is um, partly because it comes from the first place I ever worked, and that is Honeywell. Okay. Um, and probably every one of us has a thermostat at home. So you have something on the computer screen. Can we bring that up on the uh, television, please? Okay. So um, obviously, as we just went through the doorknob, you can turn this and you see the display of the temperature in this mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. obviously, as it changes. Mm -hmm. This took over 10 years for the engineers to figure wow. out how to design something as simple as this. You're kidding me. 10 years to do that. Now, that was in the 50s, you said? Yeah. Okay. 1954 was the first one of those that was shipped. So the ideas were worked on for a decade before. So it was, uh, were you telling me earlier that it was the behind the scenes too, the, the electronics right. that fit? So right. the design, the person could design the front, but mm -hmm. the, right. the people that were doing the electronics had to say, well, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Or, okay, right. so that took 10 years. Okay. Well, in those cases, engineers were much slower than they are now. Mm -hmm. But today, it would probably take a much faster amount of time. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> better. Okay. But uh, the real problem was that most um, temperatures were done with levers that moved left and right. Oh, okay. And so they had to figure out a whole mechanism that actually turned. Right. And that was part of what was difficult. Right. I moved to Apple Computer. Can we bring up more on the, on the TV screen, please? And in the days I joined the PC uh, world, People just thought of um, computers as doing text and numbers. Right, right. And of course, for me, coming from display world, I wanted to show all sorts of pictures and images and things uh -huh. like that. And um, so this is, in fact, the first document layout that we ever did at Apple oh. to say, hey, imagine you could put pictures inside. What was that called? It was called a compound document. And it led to, here you have little images moving. Yeah, next up, please. I and think we should just keep them up on the screen, on the TV, please. There we go. And then this was actually a thing that shipped with the first um, version of QuickTime, which was called Simple Player. The point was that people didn't know you could click on it. So we had oh. to put a controller on it. And in, that, in fact, she moved and told us the story. Oh, OK. So that's what the Simple Player at the bottom does. I see. Nowadays, QuickTime is much more evolved, much fancier. But this is a historic thing that began in the mid-'80s okay. with um, Apple. What will I do next in my life? Work. What I encountered was. Um, Right, then we, there a graduate okay. student uh, who had done this project, um, which was uh, his, one of his graduate classes. And this beautiful aesthetic animation, in my opinion, um, stunned me enough to say, well, what's actually going on here? And what is going on here is that every second is speeded mm -hmm. up. You see all the flights going in and out across American space, mm -hmm. air, airspace, which is actually free information provided by the FAA. And here you see some different colors that were used to, he used to color the airplanes wow. coming in and out. Um, this piece was actually bought recently by MoMA. This got me thinking about, well, you know, if those uh, computer people are now using data to start showing beautiful displays, mm -hmm. then what could we do with it back home? 
um, home being Yahoo. Mm -hmm. So this was the first um, particular simulation that he did for me, which was using uh, 911 calls coming into Los Angeles and showing, if you look at the red areas, how the um, quantity of accidents was getting denser in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Wow, and worked with teams that did this, and you organized the teams to do this information, to, to pull it all together. Yeah, and the team was a very small number of people. It was mm -hmm. two or three people. Mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the last piece you showed us? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly what happens here is you try to get hold of the data, which mm -hmm. is actually quite hard, mm -hmm. and then the actual simulation of how it looks is much easier than mm -hmm. um, even gathering the data. Mm -hmm. So here the artists are actually playing with how it looks to make it seductive and interesting. What it is, it's uh, very cool looking. This display really starts showing you how to bring the user more actively involved. So and we have another display up, please. And this is called Yahoo Answers. Mm -hmm. This is user-created content. Ah, there you go. Which is a stream, if you like, a blog, where teenage girls are sort of talking about piercings and body parts and talking about I have, and I told these people these things. And really what this is, is a pulse of the nation kind of display. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you could imagine it being used for a blog, um, oh. and a, a swarm of interesting ideas. And in the future, you might be able to see this as a quick summary yeah. of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. OK. So well, you, this, this, these must have been great jobs to have. Well, yeah. It was particularly interesting, because most of the time, we were doing it sort of under the carpet. People who work in a company often don't know what their company's products all mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. and also don't know what they really do. Mm -hmm. So it was a fun thing to make people realize what was up. So what do you have here? You've got something else to show us from you yeah. within the company itself? Mm, well, this one is actually an artist I, that up, please? I started sponsoring when he was a graduate student intern with me called Danny Rosin. Can we please bring it up on the, on the screen? There we go. Danny Rosin. Okay. And, <laughs> and what he's doing is... Um, He's playing with something different than data now. He's displaying with the way in which you appear um, as forms of the data. So what you see here is a, a mirror uh -huh. made of wooden pixels, if you could believe it. Wow. All individually controlled by server motors, and they've repositioned to reflect basically the light and dark shadows of you as you move in front of it. He also made one which I think is interesting because it makes the person standing in front of it stands still because their image only appears oh. um, if they're still enough for the pixels to fall, as it were, uh, around their shape and their shadow. Oh, oh, like a snowstorm. Yes, this oh. is like, yeah, and it's a thread screen. Oh, okay. So you don't really see, again, high resolution, but also because the wind blows, it kind of oh. floats in front of you very interestingly and very slowly follows you. So it's a shadow, snow. And this effect. is done inside Yahoo. A lot of cool Sorry. stuff. Okay, now we've got uh, a fire plug. Yep, it's a fire plug. And what's that got to do with interface design? Right. Well, we'll show you. Okay. So hold tight. Hold tight. Um, so last week I was at the degree show at NYU at mm -hmm. the Interactive Telecommunications Program, which has 200 graduates a year mm -hmm. doing these kind of projects, which the is fire pretty plug. scary. So what the fire plug does? It has um, a camera uh -huh. and. Oh. Uh, <laughs> to project and also um, a microphone on it. Really? And what it does if you stamp, if you can see the people moving their feet, yeah. their little worms get projected onto the ground and then they crawl into a grate and disappear into the ground. What's this got to do with the fire plug? The fire plug has got the camera and the um, oh, and it's, and it's, it's it. projecting it down. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. so you don't know it's coming up from the no. fire plug. No. It oh, just wow. happens to be there right next to it. And because it's audio sensitive, I was showing you that it doesn't always have to be a visual thing that's changing, uh -huh. but you can be making noise and have the display change. This is a graduate student project that he did probably just for a class. And who is this? Um, I can't pronounce his last name, but <laughs> he's uh, graduate, graduating this year. And, from, um, from where was it again? It's NYU. NYU? New, New York University. Okay, great. In okay. Interactive Telecommunications Program. Inter okay. Interactive telecommunications, telecommunications program. program. Okay, very good. Directly oh, you're up on the screen already. Okay, what do we have? Directly manipulating an interface. So this is getting closer to our world of the doorknobs, if you like. Okay. But um, in this case, what we have is an installation I put up at Yahoo, which is uh, a camera in the ceiling. Uh -huh. And as people walked across what used to be the billiard room, mm -hmm. they capture a passage of you moving over 
and that image is put back into the collage, which oh, yeah. is pro projected behind you. Uh -huh. And as you can see, this particular kid is very actively engaged uh -huh. and particularly excited by it. And other people often are just not really aware that there's anything going on. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. People don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. Their mm -hmm. image will be projected. Mm -hmm. And other people, like, she's utterly oblivious, uh -huh. right? She doesn't even know her image has gone in there. But uh -huh. it can be taken either way. Uh -huh. And this is um, a very simple way of showing people so this fellow thing. obviously was involved in the uh, in this project. The fellow that was Scott Snibby, who runs his own interactive mm -hmm. uh, media company in San Francisco, who mm -hmm. I worked with for many years. But mm -hmm. I commissioned this piece for Yahoo's lunchroom. I see. So it, it looks like you could you could splay this off into just go into art, just for the purely aesthetic, interesting, wild, you know, things, or you go into the more nefarious CIA sort of undercover. Parts and are people doing that? Do you know them doing to, going to both? My right, yes. is that it? True. Well, okay. it depends if you want to get paid or not. Nefarious will yeah. get you paid. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's a lot Esoteric. of good money in the security business, and there's yeah. less money in the arts. But yeah. uh, what's interesting is that they play with the rules, so that um, for a company like Yahoo, mm -hmm. anything like that, and mm -hmm. they thought they kept saying to me, "What kind of people are they? Are they they're artists, right?" And I say, "No, no, no, they're programmers." And they, no, 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 they're not programmers. They can't possibly be programmers. And yet, you look at what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. It's they're very pro complicated sure, of course, yeah. programming. Absolutely. And yeah. mechanical engineering mm -hmm. as well. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bring up another piece, please. The browser here is a browser to all of the out of print oh. books. Well, get this, people. Check and really pay attention to what she's talking about. These are books. You can see the icons of the books, or go out and look at them as a, looks like a waterfall of information. But those are actually all books. Right. And you can go down and pick out any book you want from the... Is this is from the Internet Archive, which oh. is a publicly available resource. Mm -hmm. We'll find these images. So when I first did this project with Bruce DeCale, who runs the Internet Archive... Look at that. So you can pick, you go through the alphabet and pick any, any, mm -hmm. any letter and then go in deeper and deeper into it. So you go left and right with the mouse and then mm -hmm. you move the scroll wheel forward and so you zoom in. The computer can't keep up with the browsing. It's mm -hmm. not the actual mm -hmm. um, software here. It's actually mm -hmm. the computer hardware. Yeah. So an interface, again, is the thing that you need to design and build mm -hmm. if you want everybody to be able to get Now, who to designed this interface? Um, my group at Yahoo, and it okay. was done by Michael Chen. OK, so they gave you a, the money came from where? Yahoo, or came from the, the Internet, Internet Archive? The Internet Archive uh, self-funds mostly, mm -hmm. but they have some non-profit funds as mm -hmm. well from mm -hmm. libraries and museums. Mm -hmm. But it's a free resource for everyone. They also do the Wayback Machine. Yes, yes, I love the Wayback Machine. I use it all the time, all the time. We're coming close to the end. We have a minute left. What do you want to say to our viewing audience? Well, as you can see, there's a lot of people experimenting with this new medium. Uh, both on the input end, the output end, and also the relationship between the user and the technology. And those media artists are a new breed, a new generation. And we need classes and we need programs for them to continue to play with these rules. Um, I used to run a design expo for 22 years until this year where we lost our corporate funding. And although it's a very cheap, affordable program, we need more industry to realize that engineering is not the only place that innovation comes from and certainly not, as you can see by these examples. And there are also these uh, pro people who can program technology mm -hmm. and uh, engineering. And the other part is that we don't have a place really to showcase this work. Mm -hmm. We don't have a gallery or a studio. There is one in New York called Bitworks, but we don't have anything really where this work can be showcased. Mm -hmm. So we used to be able to do that at the Design Expo oh, I see. in the show and tell. So I'd like to be able to allow more of this work to happen in more ways. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you. And thank you all for showing up here, and thank you for watching on TV.